This is Rummy's Corner. Rummy's Corner. Lennox Lewis is widely viewed as one of the greatest heavyweight boxers of all time, and not without great reason. Lennox was a three-time heavyweight champion, and his resume is an outstanding one, where he beat a who's who of top heavyweight contenders over a stretch from 1992 until 2003. Lennox holds the distinction of being the last undisputed world heavyweight champion more than 20 damn years ago. Lewis earned notable high-profile victories against Evander Holyfield, Mike Tyson, and Vitaly Klitschko. And he likewise beat a slew of other top heavyweights from his era, including Shannon the Cannon Briggs, Andrew Galata, Michael Grant, David Tua, and Donovan Razor Ruddick, just to name a few. Indeed, Lennox is one of the few boxers during the long rich history of heavyweight boxing who retired having beaten every man he ever faced as a professional. Lennox suffered just two defeats in his career, and he avenged both of those losses when he rematched his conquerors, Oliver McCall and Haseem Rockman. Despite avenging his only two losses, the loudest detractors of Lewis view these two losses as damning evidence that largely overshadows his otherwise perceived greatness. Because in his first fights with McCall and Rockman, Lennox was dropped and stopped by a single punch against opponents who were never on his level. And that is the single biggest criticism regarding the career of the great Lennox Lewis, where his ability to take a punch is still a topic of much debate, where Lennox is often accused of having a so-called glass jaw. Indeed, whenever a hypothetical matchup involving Lennox is the topic, those picking against him will often claim, quote, if Oliver McCall and Asim Rockman could stop Lennox Lewis with one punch, then so can Fighter X, because Lennox Lewis had a glass jaw, end quote. Myth or fact, did Lennox Lewis have a glass jaw? In my eyes, I have no doubt whatsoever when I say, it's a complete and total myth. Lennox Lewis did not have a glass jaw. If his ability to take a punch was as bad as his loudest detractors declare, then Lennox would have never retired having beaten every man he ever faced, including victories and rematches against his former conquerors. In the case of Rockman in particular, Lennox avenged one devastating knockout loss with a devastating knockout victory of his own. But the proof that Lennox did not have a glass jaw is in the entirety of the rest of his career. Those were the two times in 44 professional contests where he beat some damn good fighters during an absolutely stacked era in heavyweight boxing history. Beyond that, it's not as if Lennox never took another good punch. Guys like Michael Grant and even Mike Tyson both tagged him with nice shots that only emboldened Lewis. And Lewis was in a bit of trouble against some other hard punchers in his career. Notably guys like Frank Bruno, who had Lewis in some trouble. Shannon the Cannon Briggs, who was a tremendous puncher who could really bang. Vitaly Klitschko, where Dr. Iron Fist was a big strong guy with a solid punch. And of course, merciless Ray Mercer, another guy who had excellent punching power. Now on the flip side, I often hear Lennox supporters saying things like, those were so-called lucky punches, or that the punches that nailed Lennox were so good that they could have knocked out nearly every heavyweight in history. I think those are myths too. Neither punch was lucky. McCall was working with the great Emmanuel Stewart, and they were specifically working on ways to catch Lennox with sneaky right hands. And Rockman set up his big punch extremely well, sensing Lennox was tired, and chasing him halfway across the ring to set up and land the history-making punch. And as far as those punches knocking out any heavyweight in history, I don't believe that either. 
Rockman and McCall were both probably better punchers than the loudest Lennox detractors will ever concede, but at the same time, neither of them were considered elite punchers. The truth, as I see it, is that Lennox had a pretty good shin, all things considered. It wasn't an elite shin. He can be hurt, he can be stopped, and the two times he was knocked down, he did not exactly display the greatest recuperative powers. But at the same time, he wasn't out cold. Both times, Lennox bravely displayed his championship heart when he tried to get up and continue, but wobbly legs prevented him from getting the chance against McCall, and he was just a bit too slow in his effort to beat the count against Rockman. The real problem Lennox had with the two punches that knocked him out, I don't think it was so much about the power. I think Lennox clearly absorbed punches that had more oomph behind them at various points in his career. The real problem was that these punches were both impeccably well-timed. In other words, it wasn't the power, or at least not just the power. It was the timing of a superbly placed punch that, in both instances, Lennox never saw it coming. They were well-disguised punches, and a well-disguised punch is like a well-disguised thief in the depths of the night. They tend to have a way of finding the mark. McCall and Rockman did find the mark, with expert-like precision, and as a result, Lennox will forever have those two blemishes on his otherwise tremendous ledger. As a final thought, if we could hypothetically take a prime version of 1997 Lennox Lewis and have him square off against 20 of the greatest heavyweights throughout history, sure, he may suffer a few KO losses along the way, but for my two cents, he emerges winning many more times than he loses. He represents an extremely challenging style matchup for any heavyweight ever. And just because McCall and Rockman knocked him out doesn't mean any heavyweight with a punch could have necessarily done the same. His awesome resume proves this, where he beat many guys with good power, sometimes stopping them before they had a chance to do anything. In my humble opinion, it is a myth that Lennox Lewis had a glass jaw. I actually believe his chin was pretty damn good in the grand scheme. What do you think? Thanks for watching everyone, I hope you enjoyed and have a wonderful night. This is Rummy's Corner.